Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team is currently excavating the Soft Key Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description listing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what our diggers have for week 293. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now, without further ado, let's get to it. First up from Yarmoranta, we've got DOS games backslash arcade backslash clon IV48. I'm gonna guess something like Clone Invaders, like a Space Invaders clone. Um, well, that puts a point in my favor because now we've got Clon Inv instead of Clon Iv. Um, we also have a doc file, and that's about it. So, edit Clon Inv dot doc. And what have we got? Clone Invader. <laughs> Oh, I'm getting better at this. I mean, it's been how many episodes, how many weeks now of Shovelware Diggers? Uh, 293? <laughs> Anyways, copyright 1987 all the way up to 91 by a Gary Curring? Queering? Curring or Queering? Something like that. Um, Clone Invader is an arcade style game that requires either a CGA, EGA, MCGA, or VGA graphics adapter. It's compatible with 8088 all the way up to 8486. Clone Invader is not compatible with a computer that has an NEC 5 series microprocessor. Uh, are there any PCs that would have that? Like, I mean, outside of Japan, because I think in Japan, the PCF, PC, 98 architecture might use something like that. Like, I'm not 100% certain on that. I'm, in fact, I'm probably completely wrong on that. But, yeah, I never didn't realize that was a thing for, like, IBM computers. Okay, now it looks like it, the game actually has mouse support. That might be interesting, like, playing a Space Invaders game with the mouse as opposed to the keyboard. Like, I mean, the controls for a Space Invaders game are dirts, are like super simple. It's like just left, right, and fire. <laughs> it's hard to screw them up. So I guess we'll see if doing it with the mouse is actually possible. Although this person is asking for $20 US to register along with an additional five if you're outside of the US <laughs> to, accom to accommodate the shipping fees. Um, that's a lot to ask for a Space Invaders clone. So this had better be the best Space Invaders clone ever. And I've got a funny feeling it won't be, but you never know. Let's find out together. Okay, we got Clone Invader with the R upside down. <laughs> okay, that's kind of a neat trick. Because you, you can't do that with the, the font itself, especially since the R still looks normal. Also, P per... Oh, <laughs> I was about to say, there was an extra P in press, but the invader came along and got rid of it, and it's now getting rid of that upside-down R. And replacing it with a correct R. Okay, that's a little clever. It's a little clever, having the, having the invaders do some reworking of the graphics there. Okay, so we got a, a little demonstration of how that was going to play. So we click to start and... Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, the, um, that's mouse control right there. Mouse control is perfect. Okay, and just like with re regular Space Invaders, you can only have one shot in the air at a time. Yeah, this is... This is playing perfectly fine. <laughs> now, is it playing $20 worth is a better question, given the fact that... Ow. Okay, that sound hurts my brain. Okay. <laughs> the terrible sound is gone. Okay, and I'm also noticing that... Oh, I was about to say that the enemies can only have two shots in the air at a time, but nope, I've seen three in the air at a time now, so... And yet, the invaders are indeed getting faster the more of them you clear. So, yeah, this is playing like legit Space Invaders. The question is, is there going to be anything more to it than just the standard rows here? Like, we're going to find out. I haven't lost any lives, and it's only a few left. Okay, six, five, four, three, two, 
one, and... Oh, gotta get this last one. There it goes. And then we just move on to a new route, although they start lower this time. So it's definitely increase... Whoops. <laughs> it's definitely increasing the difficulty in that manner. So yeah, the Clone Invaders. It's a legitimate Space Invaders clone with decent mouse control. <laughs> Which, like, that's... It's very... Okay, it's hard to talk over that thing. But yeah, it's very difficult to actually find DOS... Oh, I got an extra life. To find DOS games with... That are amateur made. That have really good mouse controls. And part of the reason for that is because... The mouse is actually a tricky to use in DOS. For quite a number of reasons. Like, there's no easy way to do it. So, you pretty much have to know how to program for it. So when you actually, when you have good mouse controls, like, there you go. So yeah, Clone Invaders. Decent Space Invaders game. In fact, a pretty decent Space Invaders game. Worth $20? Eh, that's kind of pushing it. I think for something like this, 15 would have made more sense. Next up from Zinfidel ZT, we've got win games backslash comp backslash code hunt. Okay, probably gonna be some kind of, um puzzle game, I would imagine. Something to do with deco decoding things or such. Um, we got a code hunt, executable, and help file, as well as file id.diz, which says code hunt, the best mastermind type game available. And literally nothing more than that, because apparently that's all you need to know. The best mastermind type game available, as opposed to, you know, actual mastermind <laughs> um, what's the help file say so code hunt by david something it is literally impossible for me to read that from a distance because <laughs> remember this is a tiny window on my screen you guys get to see it nice and full screen for me it's very small and pixelated <laughs> um well maybe maybe we'll get it here um there we go david onglotko onglotko uh, that's my best. Also, yet another person who doesn't understand the difference between public domain and freeware, because judging by the way this has been written here, he thinks it's one and the same. Public domain is not freeware. <laughs> but anyways, um, how to play the game. So, well, actually, this is Mastermind Clone, right? We don't really need to read this, although I do appreciate that he's gone to the effort to put full, like, full-size pictures and graphics and stuff, and also, wait a minute. Well, no, that's interesting. This is actually a context, uh, like, a con uh, pointer-sensitive image here. If I click on this area here, it says results area, but if I click on this area here, it says, oh, it, there's actually multiple, so there's inactive guess area, but also the active row, that's pretty interesting that he managed to do that inside a Windows help file, a Windows 3.1 help file. I didn't even know that was possible. Like, I mean, obviously it's possible to get these little pop-ups to show up. I didn't know you could do it as, like, a clickable area inside an image. Okay, this is funny. This game is distributed on an as-is basis with no implicit or explicit warranties, guarantees, assurances in the present or future. By using this software, you hereby agree not to hold the author liable or responsible for any direct or indirect consequential damages resulting from the use of the software. So, I think the point, the point here is going back to how games can sometimes be addictive. Like, I remember one person actually emailing me once very long ago <laughs> telling me that they missed, they missed an exam <laughs> because they were caught up playing, um, I uh, was it, I, for, I forget if it was Pixel Ships or Space Fortress. One of those two games from my website. <laughs> so I kind of had to... Wait a minute. This is clickable? Okay then. So I guess if you click the smiley face, you get a smile. But yeah, so, so it's like, this is just so if somebody like misses an exam like that one person did, it's like, that's, it's your fault. You were playing the game. <laughs> Okay, Code Hunt. So we've got our game here. It's not maximizable, so we got the proper size window already. Center screen, we got our colors here. There's an I give up button and an enter guess button. And we got help, 
which gets us an about and everything. And then options, number of tokens. So if we set this all the way up to seven, let's we'll start a new game. And yeah, it does make the window bigger. So we can have a really complex game, or we can have it nice and simple at four. Let's just leave it at four for now. And so we can also allow color repetition and empty spots. I think we'll leave those off for now, because color repetition usually makes it harder. So let's just do new game. So we got seven colors, and they're actually fairly well distinct. Um, the two, the black and the gray, are kind of similar. Like, I mean, you can tell them apart for sure, but... Eh, a little too similar for my tastes. But then, if you're working with the Windows 16 color palette, you don't have a lot of options. Well, let's just go with the with the four on the top there. Black, blue, cyan, and green. And if we get that, go to the next row. So one of them is... Okay, it's always it's always confusing which which color whether it's white or black to indicate correct spot or, cor or correct color type. Okay, black peg means that it's in the correct position. White peg means it's the right color, but the wrong position. Okay, so based on that, only one of these colors is in here. So that means three of the other colors are going to come from these five. Hmm. Okay, so if I do purple, red, yellow, white, we see that there's three correct colors in here. And there was also one correct color in here, so we already know that light gray is nowhere in the code. So that helps us out a bit. Let's see if we can narrow this down a bit. Let's do blue, purple, or magenta, whatever, red, and yellow. No white. Okay, that got rid of one valid color. Now that's interesting, because we changed this one. Yeah, so that kind of tells us that blue is the wrong color, and white is a correct color. So that means one of these other three are to blame here. So let's do red, yellow here, white here, and then let's go with black. And there's still only three colors. Okay, so we've confirmed that... We've confirmed through this process that white is definitely in the puzzle. We've also confirmed that magenta is also in the puzzle. Because when we replace magenta with black, we didn't get a change in the number of colors, in the number of valid colors in the puzzle. So black is also in there. So black, magenta, and white confirmed. It's red and yellow that we don't know about. Actually, I'm kind of inclined to believe because magenta was probably magenta, red or yellow was in a correct position here and magenta, red or yellow was in a correct position here as well. And given that I've cycled these through as well as I did, I have a funny feeling that the black is actually supposed to be there. And then I'm going to guess magenta here red here and white here oh okay so magenta is actually the color that's not in here because initially i assumed that because we replaced purple with black and the number of valid colors didn't change that that must have they both must have been valid but no the only logical explanation for this result right here is if neither purple and black are in here, which means red, yellow, and white are correct colors, and then purple, magenta, and black are wrong, and then we also know that blue is wrong because red and yellow are clearly in here. Hmm. Okay, I'm looking this over. I think what we have here, I think red goes here, I think yellow goes here, and white goes here. I think. And then as for the last one, it's either got to be cyan or green. Because we already know blue's not in here, and we know now that black's not in there. Um, oh, and I also found out, if you double-click, that gets rid of it. If you don't want it in the particular line. Um, let's try green. And... Okay, so I got three of them correct, and it's clearly not green. So, red, white, yellow, and cyan. This has to be right. And there you go.
I, I accidentally, because of the double click, it clicked through something that came up there. But yeah, there you go. So cyan, red, white, yellow is the correct combination. Oh, and I just noticed there's a scroll bar here. So we had more than 10 guesses. We could have gone all the way up to 20, but we didn't need to. We got it in seven. So that was Code Hunt, uh, Mastermind clone with decent 16 color graphics. Like, I mean, if you don't mind the dithering, but yeah, plays perfectly fine. And our last game for today from Joseph Adams is Win Games backslash WC backslash Wall and T101. The only thing I can think of is Walnut, but that kind of doesn't make sense as the name of a game. Uh, I don't know. Let's find out. So, <laughs> Walnut. There it is. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, so, um, apparently there's a MIDI file. That's going to be a treat for the ears. Um, also a warped DLL and a warped help file. Why is the help file warped, but the executable walnut? Also, high score needed its own DLL. What? <laughs> okay, this is bizarre. Um, well, I guess we'll go into the help file. Uh, warped for Windows walnuts. I don't know what to expect. Well, apparently, whatever this is, it's a. It says no part of these games, so it this might be just one game out of several, from a like a certain pack or something. In any case, apparently they're made by an Eric Lee Steedle and a Brian Lowe. So let's see here. Apparently there is registration for it. Um, what's the registration fee? Is the better question. And apparently the registration fee is twelve dollars for the specific program or the entire warped package for $35. So yeah, this is one game out of multiple. And let's see, what's the actual package contain? Okay, hang on a second here. It says here, like, there, it's going into the, the particular program that's mentioned here in a moment, but it starts with an information, with an information paragraph here about a game called Warheads. And apparently this was a game made by the same author, authors, an arcade-style game simulating a nuclear attack by a foreign country. Warheads, which was also distributed as shareware, came out in 1991. It's been well-received by the shareware community. Later, it became part of a game package known as the WayForward Game Pack 1, distributed by WayForward Technologies? They were around that early? Holy jeez. Like, WayForward is still around today. <laughs> Anywho, so this warped package is apparently a pack of six games of which this particular one we've got here is a part of. So you can either get that entire package for $35, which is six games, or this one game alone for $12. And apparently this particular game is trying to catch nuts dropped by a psychotic squirrel high in the treetops. <laughs> Watch out, he's got a supply of rocks which break your basket. So it's, it's like Evil Scunny. Are we going to be taking on Evil Scunny and his dangerous nuts? No, no, I'm thinking about it right now. It's Evil Scunny and his rock hard nuts. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be the title of the video. Anywho, let's actually take a look at the actual object of the game here. So catch all of the nuts that the squirrel throws at you. If you miss a nut, then you lose a basket. The squirrel can throw rocks depending upon the options you select on the control panel. Do not catch the rocks, they break your basket. Okay. Oh, so probably, uh, um, okay, that, that, oh, I want controls. Where's my controls? Gameplay. Scroll moves back and forth and drops nuts from his place in the tree. You control the basket and move it underneath of the nuts in an effort to catch them. Right, so, um, okay, control options, and apparently mouse is an option. So we may have another game with good mouse controls. That would be nice. Okay, let's see what we got here. Walnut. <laughs> Uh, okay, so, um, let's move the, oh, I can't move it out of the way, because of, um, anyways, it says here, you know Santa Claus is watching, would you like to know what he sees? Is he someone who is enjoying a game but hasn't sent any money to its poor, starving authors yet? I think there's still time, though. It's not too late to redeem your soul. Won't, won't you please do so today? Otherwise, there won't be any presents for you at Christmas. Uh, okay. <laughs> so... Yes, yeah, registration, use period of 28 days, okie dokie then. 
So yeah, unfortunately, we didn't get to see the the title screen in all its glory for more than a s split second there. But because this is the magic of video, I could just take a screenshot of it and plop, there it is on the screen for you in all of its glory, bask in its presence. <laughs> oh, geez. Okay, back to actually trying to play this thing. So, one player, starting level one, sound effects and music, um, that can have a status dialogue, display score, display lives, welcome to Walnut's Rodent Prey, okay. Uh, game options, scroll speed slow, falling nut speed constant or varying. I think varying will be more interesting. Variety is the spice of life. Slow and steady. Okay, that's actually kind of neat. It has um, different messages it gives you when you select things. So if we select slow, slow squirrel at play, your basic squirrel, the adrenaline squirrel, aka Scunny. Um, drop rocks, chicken gumbo, what? <laughs> or watch for falling rocks. Um, we can limit bat. I want to live forever. Everyone dies sometime. <laughs> and then turn that button on and turn that button on. <laughs> like that, that that's totally useless. There is no reason for this for these two buttons to exist. <laughs> and look at the presets here. Lethargic, enthusiastic, or rodent from hell. <laughs> Holy jeez. Okay, I'm already I'm already liking the sense of humor that this game has cuz it's absolutely ridiculous. Although I'm noticing that I can't click the okay button. Uh Maybe that's a, a thing with the um, full version or something. Because it says here the game options. You control the games. In the, to show game options box, use the game options. Main options dialog box. Yeah, it doesn't say anything about it being a shareware restriction. Well, maybe it is. So for the controls, if we select keyboard for player one, its control has shifted to the keyboard. For mouse, squirrel, mouse, they're all just rodents. Or for player two, prepare to melt the keyboard. <laughs> or another one of those rodent things? I guess if you had like two two mice for your computer, would that even work? I mean, I've heard of some games actually being capable of using two mice for input, but generally speaking, if you connect two mice to a computer, you just have both mice do it, affecting the same cursor. And if we try to increase these, are you sure you're on the level? It even asks that on level one. Okay, then. And then two players... <laughs> oh, my... <laughs> oh, this game. I haven't even started playing this game yet. <laughs> and then apparently one player is lonely. Because, yeah. Um, silent running or drink dunk whammo crash... Or Dink Dunk or Whammo Crash, okay. Um, shh. Or, la la la. Like, we haven't even heard the music yet. We don't know how ear splitting it's going to be. Um, we can have a status dialogue. Nurse, I need stats. Stat. Or, no stats today. I don't want to know. How am I doing? My friend, the end is far away. Or, this is the end. My only friend, the end. For displaying lives. And then, everyone freeze. Or never mind. Um, why is pause an option? That seems a little weird. Okay, I think we're ready to actually start playing this finally. Um, I've been recording 14 minutes and haven't even played the game yet. Well, here we go. I can barely hear that. Okay, that's some interesting music. <laughs> now, I do like the fact that the game is taking up the full screen, despite the fact that I'm at an 800 by 600 window, but 640 by 480 is the norm. So it's basically doing some um, stretched blitz here. And you can definitely tell because there's some pretty heavy aliasing going on with the graphics. And apparently that squirrel gets mad at me anytime I clear a level successfully. 
Oh yeah, something else I should point out is ever since I updated my computer, I've noticed that MIDI sounds a bit different now because I'm using an actual like modern day Sound Blaster card instead of an onboard Realtek chipset. So I've noticed that anything that passes through that, through the wavetable, actually gets a pretty, pretty more expected sound to it compared to with the Realtek stuff. What I'm trying to say is that if you played this game way back in the mid 90s with a wavetable sound card, it would probably sound just like this. <laughs> and I just got an extra basket too. So I'm guessing the game stats would have been showing like the le current level and stuff. Oh, that's interesting. If you left click, oh no wait, now it's not doing it anymore. Yeah, sometimes when I click, the mouse goes away, and then sometimes when I click, it, like, comes back and doesn't go away. It's kind of weird. And I, apparently I hit the rock. So that was bad. But, no, here we go. But yeah, I wonder if there's a way that we can stop the game in progress. Um, whoops, and I missed one of the nuts, because I'm trying to look at my keyboard to figure out what keys I can press here. Oh, F1 just brings up the help. No, I don't want that. <laughs> um, yeah, I can't figure out how to pause the game, which is kind of a problem. <laughs> I mean, if I go up here, it technically does pause it, because the mouse wasn't um, locked to anything. But... I don't think that's gonna... I didn't see any options in there. Okay, let's just lose the game, because I want to go back to the options and see if turning on those stats actually shows us what level we're on and everything. And apparently the squirrel laughs at you when the game is over. Um, but we do have some final stats here. So I made it to level 4, objects thrown 201, rock ratio 10%, uh, I guess that means I hit one of... Ah, 10 rocks thrown or something? I don't know. Okay, so the status dialog doesn't show up right away, so I'm guessing that I need to like, clear a level first and then maybe I'll get a status dialog. Okay, so I cleared that. Okay, there you go. So it shows that you do your stats at the end of the level. Well, that's interesting. It's saying that my level is two. So the status doesn't update before the level increase happens, which is kind of weird, but eh, whatever. Average squirrel velocity is four. So yeah, it does seem like the squirrel gets slightly faster with every level, but it's a very slow increase. Actually, just for fun, let's go into those game options. Oh no, wait, we can't adjust them. Like, if we do adjust them and then hit cancel, do they stay adjust? No, they don't. So, yeah, apparently we can't change the game options in this version. So we're never going to know just how psychotic <laughs> this squirrel can apparently get. So that was Walnuts. So it's, um, <laughs> it's a very, very, very basic game that controls perfectly fine. Like, there's nothing weird going on with the mouse movement or anything. I have precision control with the mouse here but it's otherwise very basic, yet has a very interesting sense of humor to go with it. So, you know what, I can appreciate that. And for a Windows 3.1 game that was being sold as part of a package, like an expensive package, but if this was what was considered the lowest quality game in the package, then it kind of makes me wonder how good the other ones were. So, all things considered, yeah, this is, for what this is, this is actually decent. <laughs>